Shayla here. So as you can see right here, I've got a stack of manga on top of my bullet journal here, and it's a bunch of volume ones. So I decided to do kind of a reaction vlog to 10 <laughs> series that I have volume ones for to see if these are ones that I want to actively collect or slowly collect. So that's what this video is going to be all about, or if some of them, if I want to switch to a digital format, things like that. So let's go ahead and briefly mention each series and kind of what they're about, and then we'll start diving into actually reading them. So the first volume one here I've got is Given. I know this is a BL title, so it is a male-male centered relationship, and it centers around music. I know there's a brilliant anime for this. All of my friends who read BL love this one, so I really wanted to give this one a try. Next up we have volume one of the Apothecary Diaries. Again, it seems kind of fantasy romance-esque, reminiscent of like Snow White with the red hair, and he just looks glorious on the back, so I need to learn more about this. Next up we have Carol and Tuesday. Again, there's a brilliant anime out for this. My girl Maeve over at Maeve Ever Reading bought me this volume one for Christmas, and I cannot wait to try this one out. Next I have an old backlist title that I believe is out of print, and that is From Far Away by Kyoko Hikawa. Again, this was one that I got from Maeve, and she knows my taste, so I really think I'm gonna like this one. Next was another gift for Christmas, and that is volume one of A Witch's Love at the End of the World. This is a fantasy Yuri title, which is female-female centered if you're unfamiliar with the terminology. And again, my friends who read Yuri have really enjoyed this, so I really want to try this one. And then I keep hearing about the White Cat's Revenge as plotted from the Dragon King's Lap volume one. The title's ridiculously long, but the art looks absolutely adorable, and I'm not sure if this is, I'm not sure, like, if this has, like, Yuri vibes, or, I don't know. I don't know enough about it yet to really tell you much at this point, other than I think it's adorable looking, and I'm really excited to try it. Next up we have Queen's Quality Volume 1. Now I do believe this will kind of mirror QQ Sweeper. I've read all of QQ Sweeper, but I want to collect all of Queen's Quality as well. So I decided to backtrack, come back to Volume 1, and it says on the back the a sequel to QQ Sweeper, but from what I hear they overlap a bit. So I'm really interested to see what happens as I read this Volume 1. Next I have A Gentle Nopal's Vacation Recommendation. I've heard mixed things about this one, but I ended up picking it up recently and I'm really excited to try it. And next up, I had these on my shelf for a little while, so I'm really interested to try these out. It's the first two volumes actually of Scarlet Soul. Since I have both of them, I'm going to read both of them for this vlog. But again, this looks very fantasy romance, Yona of the Dawn kind of in its appearance. So I'm really interested to learn more about the series as I dive in. And then the last one here is The Girl with the Senpaku Eyes, Volume 1. Again, this is kind of a girl who has RBF, and I believe she's got a crush, so she's not sure her crush will ever see her because of her face and her eyes. So um, I have heard adorable things about this particular one, so I'm really excited. So that's the stack, and I will come back to you once I've read something. Okay, so the first one I decided to try was The Girl with the Senpaku Eyes, and I have no regrets. This is so precious, because you see this boy on the back um, that she has a crush on, and he thinks she's really cute. He calls her the cute girl with the Senpaku Eyes. You get a side story of him at the end, and it's all about her being an adorable, blushing, crushing high school girl, and she is nervous and anxious and doesn't know how to talk to him, so it's about them slowly starting to form a friendship that I think will turn into a relationship throughout the course of the series. And I laughed, I like swooned, it's so cute. It's, it's actually in color, which is really nice, and I'm definitely gonna be physically collecting this one because this is too pure. I, I have to, I have to have it. I just do. So anyways, I highly recommend picking up The Girl with the Sanpaku Eyes. The volumes are pricey because it's from Denpa and they have the nice French flaps and it's in color. And so you are paying a little bit more. So it's more like a graphic novel volume than like a traditional manga volume that's in black and white. So if you normally read comics, this might be a nice one to start with because 
you know, it's kind of familiar. You're working in color. You are reading in the reverse format, but it'll feel a lot more kind of like a graphic novel volume than a normal manga volume. So it's a great like first step. So yes, I'm going to continue to collect this physically because it's totally adorable. All right, so I have now finished volume one of Given, and this was really sweet, but it's definitely got an undertone of grief to it, so I'm gonna put the trigger warning out there. Um, we have someone who is dealing with grief and loss, and they were very much in love with them, and now he's finding a way to use music to express his grief and cope. So this is definitely gonna have that sad undertone to it, but um, the rumors about this quiet guy who started to disrupt our one of our protagonists' nap time at school. You know, he's new to the school and there were rumors that he was gay in middle school and that he had a classmate that died. And then this is implying that the person that he was in love with is the one that died. And this was beautifully done. It's definitely like, there's already like, blushing and stuff going on between our two main male characters and it definitely has those great BL vibes to it. So I really am excited to continue reading this series. I don't want to say too much because I'm kind of glad I went in blind but I am going to put the trigger warning for grief out there because I know a lot of people have a hard time reading about it. So Outside of that the art is beautiful. I definitely recommend trying this one out. It is very music centered so like let's see there's one that's non-spoiler and um it's like i said it's very centered on music but it's also very very beautiful and going to be very deep and very touching so i highly recommend reading this series i'm so glad i finally listened to my friends and picked up volume one and got it read Alrighty, so i've now read volume one of the apothecary diaries and this is definitely this is definitely a political centered fantasy. It's going to be pretty romance light, I think. It's mainly following Mau Mau, I think is how you say her name. Um, she's been trained as an apothecary, but what happened is she got kidnapped and sold to the palace. And so the money that she was sending back was going to her kidnappers, not even her own family and things like that. But people find out that she can write and that she was trained as an apothecary. So now she's slowly moving up within the inner court, even though she really wants nothing to do with it. And the beautiful man on the back here ha seems to have political machinations and wants things to move in certain directions. And he seems to take on certain courtesans to the emperor and champion them to spend time with the emperor. And his top two were doing really well until one of them lost um, their child with the emperor. So the other remains in his favor and Mau Mau has now been made like her personal assistant as well as a help in the apothecary area. I love this. This is, this is like, why? I'm so glad we're starting to get so many more political fantasy centered mangas because I really love them. Um, I do think eventually there's going to be, Jinshi is the, the beautiful man's name. I do think eventually there's going to be something between Mau Mau and Jinshi. Um, she's just herself, her little freckled, flat chested self. But I really think that eventually something's going to blossom between the two of them. That's just Boo Boo the Fool here, or like my hopes at least. But he... He definitely has certain aspirations and he thinks that Mau Mau can help him get those. So I'm really excited to continue on in this one. Like I'm going to have to prioritize collecting these volumes. It is a Square Enix published and they tend to come out a little more spaced out. So anytime these ones come out, I'm definitely going to be picking them up because man, this is so good. Definitely highly recommend this one for sure. All right, so I just finished volume one of Carol and Tuesday, and this is a story about two girls who find each other and share a special moment with music. If you are a music fan, you should definitely be reading Carol and Tuesday. The art is beautiful. I love Carol and Tuesday individually as characters, and you see them start on their musical journey together. Um, Carol tends to write out 
like just songs and melodies and Tuesday is really good at lyrics and so they come together and create this beautiful force together. I really want to see this in the anime so I might just prioritize watching the anime and then catch up on the manga as it releases. I'm not 100% sure yet but I am very excited to continue the story of Carol and Tuesday because it's beautiful and I really think that it has an emotional impact that anybody who enjoys music can understand even if you don't play it or if you've acted or been in a spotlight ever you would relate to this story as well so it's really fun I really enjoy it and I recommend checking it out I think I'm going to read one more today and then save the others for um my next day off because I work tomorrow but yes I am very very excited to continue on and let's do one more today all right, so I just finished volume one of A Witch's Love at the End of the World, and this is really sweet. Um, I don't think I'm gonna like prioritize getting it in my collection, but I really enjoyed reading it. Like it's still a four star manga, but I think it's one of those that if I have a little extra every month where I'm trying to cut back on how much I'm bringing into my collection, I would pick up a volume if it was available. So anyways, we have two girls. One is kind of the gifted supposed prodigy, and then the other seems to be human, but she has a very specific kind of magic that just doesn't lend well to everybody else's magic. And so it's really interesting to have these two interacting within classes because Alice, um, the kind of gifted one, has been paired with um, Mari. I always wanted to say her last name. But Alice continues to get paired with Mari. They're roommates. And Mari is just a sweet human being who came about her powers very interestingly. That would be a huge spoiler, so I'm not going to tell you. But I'm definitely interested in reading more of this series. I may move it to a digital collect, though. I'm not 100% sure. We'll see how I feel. I've got so many series that I'm physically collecting, and I'm running out of space, so i got to start making hard decisions. But honestly, it's still super cute, and I still really enjoy it, and I still want to know what happens. So I don't think I'm going to get up on the series, but I think it's going to be a little bit lower on my collect priority list. But that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it or that the romance is bad or anything because it's definitely all really sweet and really cute. And like I said, I do want to continue. Okay, friends. So I've got some more manga to talk to you about. So the first one I've got here is The White Cat's Revenge as plotted in the from the Dragon King's lap. Volume one. Now, this title is insanely long. Sorry, the lighting is super weird right now. I'm really sorry, but it's really cute. Um, in this one, we have a girl named Ruri. Ruri has um, been thwarted by this girl named Asahi like her entire life. And so she wants to go and um, like she wants to kind of break out and be on her own, start over fresh. But somehow she ends up pulled into this other world by Asahi and she ends up having magical abilities. So she's got all this magical power. She wants to thwart Asahi and her plans because she basically exiled her from this particular kingdom. And what happens is the fairies really like her. They take her side. So they cut off magic to that kingdom and some other things. So it's really interesting to watch as things play out and as Rory starts to learn her magical powers. Um, there's a great side character named Chelsea in here. And Chelsea is a woman who is helping Rory get into her powers. But she does have this mysterious, I believe it's grandson, not son, that we haven't officially met yet, though I think we've met him. And it's really cool and she ends up turning into a cat because she made a pact with a certain fairy and with this bracelet she's able to turn into a cat. So we only get so much in this first volume but it was so cute and so fun. Five stars. I absolutely love it. Definitely going to prioritize collecting it. All right, I have another one I've read, and that is A Gentle Noble's Vacation Recommendation, Volume 1. Now, in this one, we're following a man named Lizelle. Lizelle ends up in basically an alternate universe version of his own kingdom, so like his own world. But his actual kingdom doesn't exist on the map or anything. It's just kind of this blank space. And he comes across, he finds himself, you know, in unfamiliar territory. He keeps his cool, sells off his sword, kind of 
you know, tries to get himself acquainted and he runs into this adventurer named Gil. And he kind of learns a little more about the world through Gil and decides he's going to become an adventurer while he finds his way um, home and is able to, from there, kind of figure his own way through the world. And I think it's just going to be his adventures throughout this kingdom and finding his way back. Now, I found myself... This one didn't keep my attention. The art was fine, but the story was just kind of bland and a little bit two-dimensional, especially coming off just reading um, this one. And so this just felt really bland in comparison, and the art was much simpler, and I just didn't enjoy this one as much. I'm giving it three stars. It's not bad. I just don't think it's my thing. So I'm not going to be collecting any more of this one. Um, normally I would give a series three three volumes to try, obviously, but with this one, I just know that it's not going to be my thing. I, I was just bored by it, so I'm not going to bother spending the money to collect more when I know it's one I'm not going to get along with very well. So I know some people love this, and I'm sorry that I don't, but it's just not my thing. Alrighty, so now we have Queen's Quality Volume 1. I just finished this, and this sequel is so good. I'm so glad the mangaka decided to come back to this world because it is so interesting. And things that happen in the first series do directly affect what's happening in this series thus far in this first volume. So I do think you need to read QQ Sweeper before you read this one. But obviously I loved QQ Sweeper. I love this mangaka. I'm definitely going to prioritize collecting this one. It's so good. Oh, I'm so happy to be back in this world, like more so than I even thought I would be. So yes, check out, well, let me grab QQ Sweeper. It's a three volume series. It's super short. You could probably just even pick it up digitally because it's from Viz. Their digital titles tend to be cheaper than buying the physical and where that one's harder to find, you might not find it as easily and then go into Queen's Quality. I do think you need to read both to fully understand the story though. So yes to Queen's Quality, going to prioritize it, all those good things. By the way, I did do a two-part blog post about all of this with more specific details. So if you want to reference anything I've said later, I'll leave the blog post down below too. Alrighty, I just finished From Far Away. Um, this one is an older title. I'm not sure if it's even in print right now. But man, I loved this first volume. It definitely has tones of like Red River where it's that old school fantasy romance. We have a girl from modern Japan pulled into a fantastical world of some sort. And in this one, she is known as the Awakening and she's supposed to bring chaos to this world. And when she first lands, this creature tries to attack her and the gorgeous man named Isaac rescues her and kind of takes her along and tries to protect her, but ultimately he may have to kill her because she is the Awakening. So right now he's not wanting to. He sees how innocent she is. He doesn't expect the Awakening to kindly ask him his name, and the world is going into chaos. Everybody's looking for her, but no one's been able to find her yet, and some people along the way have um, started to kind of protect her like Isaac. It's so good so far. I'm going to have to see if they still publish this digitally or if I can find the full series for not a lot of money because this is really good. I definitely want more. I just need Viz to like repub all of their old shoujo fantasy romances for me because I'm thriving on them and I definitely need more. So all right, so this is the final clip for this vlog, and I'm super excited to be wrapping it up because I finished up with Scarlet Soul Volumes 1 and 2 because I had both, so I decided to read both for the vlog. And this one is definitely going to be hit or miss with people. For me, this was kind of a win. I really enjoyed it. We kind of have two people who shouldn't be attached to one another, let alone have feelings for one another. But Rin and how do I say his name? Agir, I want to say. Um, really are sweet. I quite enjoy it. So we're primarily following Rin. Rin is a girl who wanted nothing to do with her powers. She is the Scarlet Soul, but basically she's one of the most talented exorcists in the kingdom. She has an older sister, Lys, who 
um, has always kind of taken over those duties. When she suddenly disappears, everything is left to Rin to take care of the kingdom. There seems to be some political maneuvering and machinations to take out her and her sister, as well as Aegir, who is essentially a demon and they formed a pact in a sense. And this was a lot of fun for me. The art is absolutely stunning. Um, I do have to be honest, and the first like half of this volume was really kind of info dumpy and it forced some things that I don't think necessarily needed to be forced. So this was definitely not a perfect volume one. I do think volume two was much stronger and I hope that it continues in a stronger sense. So yes, those are kind of my thoughts. I gave them four and 4.5 stars relatively. Um, if you like the feel of Yona, you'll get a similar feel here because it has the political part. It's got the fantastical part, but she very clearly has powers, which is something that's different. So maybe this is a little more, I don't know. I don't really have anything good to compare it to right now, but I did enjoy it. I know this one isn't going to be for everybody. Um, so definitely check out my Goodreads reviews as well as the blog post for more specific information on this series in particular, because I think I did my longest portion of the post about that one because it was two volumes. So I've learned some series that I definitely want to prioritize collecting and some that I'm okay to not collect anymore or that can be lower on my priority list for collecting. So that's kind of where I'm at. This was a really good experiment for me. It really helped me hone in on what series I want to collect and which ones can wait so that if I have a month where I've got some extra cash, I can throw it towards those some things like that. So it just helps me align my priorities better. That's something I've not been good at when I've been doing my collecting. So this was a really great experiment to kind of kick that off. So anyways, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found a new series you want to try. If you have any questions, as always, you can leave them down below. If you're interested in becoming a member to receive extra perks, again, information down below. Anything you need is probably listed down below. So thank you again to the members that have already signed up. I always put them at the beginning screen. And I am so grateful for each and every one of your support. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. <music>